Hello, here we are in the studio. Uh, you will be here in a short while with me and I'm very excited, but I just want to, before we get to that point, I want to say some things. And uh, first and foremost, I just want to say that the Holy Spirit is the best counselor, the best guide. He never leaves us. He never fails us. He knows exactly what we need. And really during this intensive we are inviting Holy Spirit to come into places of our hearts that no human can. So no doctor, no counselor, no pastor, no human being can journey into these places of our hearts and, and reach these parts of our heart that, um, that no human can. So it's a beautiful work that he does. And I'm excited to see what he does in and through you during this time that we're going to have together. Um, I do want to give you a little bit of a picture. Um, this is a, a picture of our heart. Uh, you can see all the different words behind it. Uh, words like don't belong, broken, shame, counterfeit, I'm the problem, treasured, honored, whole, gratitude, wanted, not enough. There's all these different things that are um, parts of my heart personally. Uh, and this process of bringing our hearts to the Lord is saying, I want to surrender every piece of my heart to you, Jesus, because I want to love you with my whole heart, my whole heart, my whole soul, my mind, love the Lord your God with all of your heart. And so in order to love him with all of my heart, I need to first know what's in my heart. And then I need to invite him to come and do um, only the work that he can do. Uh, another way that I like to say it is that Holy Spirit evangelizes the unbelieving parts of our hearts. So um, in order to invite him to come and evangelize that unbelieving part of my heart, I first need to know that what that unbelieving part of my heart is. Um, and you know, in Proverbs 4, 23, it says to uh, guard your heart for from it flows the springs of life. Another version that the passion translation says above all guard, the affection of your heart for they affect all that you are pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being for from there flows the wellspring of life. So over the course of these days together, we are going to engage Holy Spirit at a heart level uh, because what grows in our hearts shapes our lives. What is in our heart informs the way that we live on a daily basis. So the heart is also where we commune with Jesus and it's where our spirit connects to Holy Spirit. And the heart is also where we are wounded. So it's where we need healing. So we need to engage with Holy Spirit at this heart level. I'm sure you all have experienced this where, you know, let's say you have anxiety or afraid of something, worried about something. And so you say to yourself, the Lord has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love and a sound mind. And at this intellectual level, I am saying the truth. I am rehearsing the truth. I am speaking the truth out loud, but I still have anxiety. I still have worry. I still have fear. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to do a whole lot. And that's because um, that truth is in our head. We can understand it. We can repeat it. We can memorize it, but we need that heart to sink down into our heart and engage that truth that God has not given me a spirit of fear at a heart level um, so that that unbelieving part of my heart that is afraid will, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by engaging the Holy Spirit, begin to believe that, yes, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love and a sound mind. And so we want to move that truth from our head to our heart level. So to to work at the heart level, we need to engage Holy Spirit and speak that heart language. And that's that's where the art and the prayer comes in. And we begin to um, kind of leave that intellect and move into our heart level where we can be transformed and engage that abundant whole 
wholehearted life, wholehearted living that, that Jesus promised us in John 10, 10. So, um, so there's unbelieving parts of our heart and we are going to bring those to the Lord and say, convince me Holy spirit of your truth at a heart level and change me at a heart level. So one of the first things we need to do is just ask the Lord, what is in my heart? What parts are unbelieving? What parts are not healed? Where do I have a heart issue or a heart wound? Um, you know, because the heart informs how we live daily, we can look at our everyday lives. We can um, see if there's anger, if there's discouragement, if I feel forsaken or grieved, if I feel rage, if I feel distress, if I feel a hardness in my heart, if I feel doubting, um, if I'm haughty, if I feel troubled, oppressed. All of these things are signs of unbelieving parts or unhealed parts of our heart. So um, we need to ask the Lord what's in our heart, and we want to deal with this heart wound. And a heart wound, what I mean by that is just an underlying attitude, motivation, or character trait in my heart that does not line up with the word of God. So a heart wound is not an action. It's not um, it's not me yelling at my kids. That's not my heart wound. Or when I was abused as a child, like those are not heart wounds um, because they're actions. But heart wounds do result from actions and vice versa. Actions can result from heart wounds. So maybe I was rejected and so then my action comes out of my heart as yelling at my kids or um, the action of me being physically abused created a wound of feeling unworthy or rejected. So um, the, other, the other thing about the heart wound is like we have been saying, it informs how we live. It pressures us um, to do and say different things. So some examples of what heart wounds could be, we've kind of already started to talk about that, but fear, doubt, unbelief, grief, loss, sorrow, um, anger, hatred, bitterness, rejection, shame, guilt, condemnation, abandonment, loneliness, um, lust, pornography, perversion, depression, hopelessness, despair, financial lack, poverty, favorite failure. All of these things can be heart wounds. Um, so for me, um, I think one of the first heart wounds I started to deal with was shame and anger and violation. I have worked on poverty and orphan mentality, uh, unbelief, doubt, hopelessness. These are all things that have been in my heart and the Holy Spirit has been honestly bringing transformation and healing and wholeness. So to as your homework, I want you to start thinking on and discerning this idea of what piece of your heart needs healing. What is a heart wound that you have? Is it anger? Is it doubt? Is it um, depression? What, whatever it is, I want you to be asking the Lord as we're moving closer and closer to our time together. And specifically, I want you to start journaling. I would love for you to journal at least three times before the intensive begins and just spend five to 10 minutes. You can just write like a stream of consciousness, whatever you are feeling, whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're thinking, this is just going to be a way for you to start sorting out what's in your heart. Um, it's going to be a way for you to begin engaging um, with what's in your heart. And as you're journaling, you can ask the Lord, Lord, what heart wound do you want to heal? Now, if I don't want you to worry about um, selling your grammar when you're journaling, um, you can write in a notebook by hand. You can pull your phone out and type on your phone or a computer, which whatever way is 
works best for you as far as journaling, go for it. Um, but as you journal, it will help to you to begin to see what's in your heart and to get in touch with your heart, with those motivations, attitudes, and the character traits that are rolling around in there. Now, if you want to take it a step further, ask the Lord um, a question in your journaling and then write down what he shows you, what you, you feel like he says. So this kind of journaling is called two-way journaling. So practically, you're just going to record um, both sides of the conversation and you need to label it. <laughs> So when you go back to read it, it makes sense. So I usually just put an M for me and a J for Jesus. However you want to do it, you can um, label it however you want. But you're just basically writing down both sides of the conversation, which conversation usually includes questions, you know. So ask the Lord something and then wait for it for a response. Um, and to give you a better idea, I just want to read an ex excerpt from my journal uh, from a few weeks back. So it says, Lord, I have been feeling tension in me, fear and dread. I realized this morning that I still have trauma to give to you from our Florida vacation when I got a text in the middle of the night about my brother's accident. I'm grieving my brother and I'm feeling stolen from. I'm trying to see you do this, but I'm getting nothing. I went back to John 10, reading about the thief and the shepherd and the gate. And Jesus, as the gate, you bring us to the Father. And I think maybe I need to see the father this time. The thought of that brings a lot of grief. I lost my brother. Where are you, Father God? What are you doing? What are you saying? Where were you? And then I felt the Lord say, my son really laid down his life for you and your brother, my sheep. And I responded, thank you, Jesus. I see the father sitting next to me on that bathroom floor in Florida after I got the text. His arms are around me and we are weeping together. Now I know where you were, father. You were with me. Then I felt like Jesus said, you were so worried in that moment, Alyssa, that I was with your brother when he was dying, that you forgot to see that I was with you too. My goodness and mercy is running after you. Let my goodness overwhelm that fear and dread, just like the ocean waves in Florida. Expect life and life abundantly. Don't expect to be stolen from. Don't expect destruction or death. Expect me to always be there as your good shepherd, chasing you with my love and goodness. And I had music playing while it was journaling, and it just so happened. I think it was God ordained that the song, Goodness of God, started playing. Um, and so I just sat in the love of the Lord and listened to that music, listened to that song and let the Holy Spirit minister to me. So that's an example of two-way journaling. Um, if all you can do is dump out what's in your heart in your journaling, that's fine. Like I said, if you want to take it a step further, you can try that two-way conversation, writing down both, both sides, what the Lord says and what you are saying. Um, so that'll be a great way for you to start priming your heart and getting ready and preparing. And that's for now, that's all I'm asking uh, for you to do as homework leading up to this, this intensive. And um, but just a couple final thoughts. I just wanted you to also to calm any nervousness or fear that you might have about the art making. Um, like I said, in the email I sent, you can splash around ankle deep in the art part of it, or you can dive into the deep end and, you know, fully immerse yourself in the art. It's completely up to you, but I don't require any sort of creativity or artistic skill. Um, this is just a way for you to visualize what the work that the Lord is doing in you throughout these uh, couple of days together. So I just wanted to show you a little bit to give you an idea. This is, I've done a whole bunch of these, but um, this is just a kind of a mini one that I did. And um, with this particular one, I was going through the heart issue of unbelief. And so this is my heart and just like the unsteadiness that I was feeling. And I wrote a bunch of things inside of the heart that I felt like were there that I wanted the Lord to deal with. And then we started walking through um, the prayers, which is 
what we will do together as well. And we just start first with generational sins and curses because that's, we start like ground zero before you were even born. Um, and so this is my page about family and generational curses and sin regarding um, unbelief. And then we pray through uh, cutting soul ties, um, having those unhealthy connections with people around my heart issue. And this is some of the visuals that the Lord gave me um, regarding my heart. And there was like a purifying fire and awesome. Then we're going to pray through the lies that we believe in our heart, as well as the decisions that we make to protect ourselves, which we call inner vows. So these are my, my pages on my vows and my lies, the truth and the lies. And this was one of the pictures that the Lord gave me, these open hands and these flowers. So I just wanted to um, visualize that and remember that. And another thing that the Lord showed me, this is actually a letter that my husband wrote me. Um, gosh, I think we were just newly married. So just this idea of arrows that were pierced in my heart and then the Lord pointing and healing that. So every little, um, every single prayer that we walk through, we're going to ask the Lord for a picture because those pictures are part of the heart language. Um, it, pictures are a way that we engage Holy Spirit. So he's going to give us pictures and then we're just going to put them on, on paper. Um, and so it's, it's really not about skill. I have stickers and paper embellishments and magazines and dictionaries and all kinds of different things for you to access. You don't have to draw a single thing um, in your book. You can just collage or paint or whatever it is you want to do. So, um, but the idea is just to have not only, um, the testimony of our mouth, but a visual testimony of what God, um, the work that he does, because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So you're going to have a visual testimony, not only um, a verbal testimony. So uh, that's just a little, a little peek into what we're going to be doing. Uh, we will pray through each of those things and, and then create art for each of those things. And again, you can do as much or as little as you want. So I'm really excited. So I just want to say the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace as leading, as leading up to our time together as the days go on. Um, go ahead and take some time to journal and I'll see you soon.